This is Reggie. Hi, Reggie. Oh my God, her breath smells so bad. Is it a Yorkie too? We think that she's Maltese and like some kind of terrier. So this is Macheo. He's eight pounds, but he's 14. He's an old man. Oh, cute. So he went in to get a couple teeth pulled and they ended up pulling all of them. So he doesn't have any teeth at all. So his tongue sticks out now all the time. Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. I'm Christopher Hamblin, AKA Mr. Royale, because I am married to the one and only Latrice Royale. <laughs> Each week, we will be taking a behind the queens look at the men behind the men behind the women that you love from RuPaul's Drag Race. I am so thrilled today to be joined by Gilbert Gaona, otherwise known as Mr. Sugar Cane, and the one and only Gus Lanza, who is Mr. Ben Delacran. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey. I think that I'm introducing you to each other right now. I started hearing about this fabulous boyfriend that Ben Delacram had, Gus, and welcome to the family. Gilbert, you just like popped around the corner on tour one day in a tank top and I was like, who is this? That's kind of how we roll. You and Suga have been together for like a decade, right? We dated before Suga even existed. Um, and are you legally married now? We got engaged right before Suga went on Drag Race. Couldn't get married then. The next year she was on, so we didn't get married then. And now COVID, so we're still not married. Our little family. No, you know, you look adorable. You just woke up. Oh, shoot. <laughs> it's been three years engagement and a 10 year relationship now. Hi, everybody. It's me, Ben de la Cram. Gus, how long have you been with Ben, and how quickly do you feel like you got absorbed into the like drag family? We have been together for over five years now. Full disclosure, I was not a Drag Race fan or really a drag fan before we really started dating. He wanted me to go on a lot of, like, to a lot of gigs with him, but I was very resistant to it, and Ben understood, and we were both on the same page with, like, let's not mix those worlds just yet. I had never worked in theater. I had never worked in entertainment. I come from a service industry background, so I've managed restaurants and worked as a waiter. And, and so I had a lot of hesitation going into touring and traveling with him. Honestly, I didn't know that I would enjoy it. Gilbert, what was life like before there was sugar cane? I actually um, used to work for Starbucks and then I started working with Enterprise. Um, now I'm on like a fleet management side. And Suge at the time was working for uh, media production. He did the nine to five. And so that was really our lives. And I think after a while of doing the daily grind, working, it was kind of like, he was thinking that I have a degree in music performance. I have sung before, I've been in performance. Like I'm not being creative and I'm not really pushing myself to be who I can be. So he just took it all the way to the other side of the world and became a drag queen. Here we go, bitch. Yeah. You both actually have your own thing going on independently of your husband. Gilbert, you're out there running marathons and saving the world from what I can tell. I was actually in the Marine Corps when I got uh, deployed over to Camp Fallujah in Iraq. There was a few Marines there that we just decided to sign up for a marathon in the San Diego Rock and Roll Marathon. I'm at 21 that I've done so far. Oh my um, God. It's yeah, it's addictive, it's like a drug. Gus, you're also a personal trainer. How did you get into physical fitness and making that your career path? I was in college. Um, I, I was kind of on the path to, to becoming an academic. I was really depressed and I tried an at least holistic approach to dealing with like depression and anxiety. Exercise kept coming up on all my searches. And then I got into actually like lifting weights and sort of studying exercise science later in life. I've had a lot of injuries. Um, I've had two knee surgeries. Oh my gosh. That's, yeah, that's when you really start learning about the body is when you start hurting places that you didn't know could hurt. And as yeah. you, get older, you really start to feel it more. Y'all are doing yeah. that thing to make us sound younger right now. Well, how about that? So I just lived at the gym while I was at grad school. And were you already starting to transition while you were in grad school? I'm a transgender person and I, I wanted to work with trans health education, kind of expand access to healthcare for trans populations. I had like changed my name and started using male pronouns when I was like 19. And uh, at this point I was 28. 
I hated the program and I missed being in Seattle. And so I ended up dropping out of grad school and then being like, I don't know what to do with my life. We were at the gym and my best friend was like, you should become a trainer. And I did. I got certified. So like, what was it like for you, like walking into those spaces and owning your masculinity in that way? Walking into a gym, it was almost like with transition, with hormones and transition, like I very much pass as a cis white man. One thing Ben and I have always been sort of aligned on in terms of our public personas and platforms is to actively kind of disrupt those narratives that like, I may look like a cis white male, but actually I'm not. And actually masculinity is very harmful and gender does not equal your private parts. Oh! So the big focus of my fitness practice and my philosophy has always been, I approach fitness not as like, you're broken, I wanna fix you, but as like, what do you enjoy about your body what do you enjoy doing in your everyday life and how can we make you feel more comfortable and function easier and enjoy life more? So Gilbert, like as you guys started kind of developing Sugarcane as a character, you were in New York City. What was the experience like of seeing these wigs and these dresses and these earrings start taking over your existence? <laughs> and her thought process is like, of who Sugar Kane was, it's like, or is, it's about kind of bringing in her life experiences. She does the bougie, she does the banji. Ah! The first thing that she did was it started with our running group um, here in New York. It's Front Runners New York. We have like a yearly talent show. She went and entered the competition, won the competition, and then she was like, I really enjoyed that. It was fun. She wanted to do um, more, so she looked up drag competitions in New York and found one. But she actually won the competition. Um, she was like, this is really what I want to do. So she was still working full time, um, going to the clubs all hours of the night, not sleeping. From there, she just kind of, her career blossomed. She always does a great job of like being sweet, which is really who who Jesus is as a boy. I mean, but at the same time, she likes to pull in that old school drag, even though she hasn't done drag for 20 years. And then she ended up on Drag Race. Yep. Drag Race is crazy. I can't believe this is happening right now. So Gus, your husband like kind of like broke the internet. I'm going home. What? Ben De La Christ sacrificed herself and sent herself home. So what did she tell you happened? <laughs> well, she goes, I did really, really well. And you're gonna think I'm crazy, but I feel really good about my decision. I sent myself home. And I was stunned. He's always had a lot of mixed feelings about the reality television structure and format. He loves what all the girls bring. He loves all the different styles of, of drag. And I think where he has, a, has has had, you know, mixed feelings is that he's like, I don't want to send anyone home. I don't want to upset anyone or make them feel bad about their drag. The poor thing just kept winning. <laughs> it was the fans who were suspicious of his motives that really hurt his feelings because he's like, I've just tried to be as my authentic self in this format that oftentimes you know, can be heavily produced. And this was really authentic and it was not, I wasn't put up to this. I'm also here to show that you can win with kindness and integrity rather than be a bitch. Why don't we play a little game? What I like to call, Michelle says. <laughs> Which of your husbands do you think that Michelle referred to as her firstborn? Ben? That was Ben. They did a whole bit about looking like, definitely that. Who did Michelle call a flamenco ho? That was Sugar. It was the purple dress that she has. But it was yeah. very flamenco. Who did Michelle just say, I don't know who you are, to? That's probably Sugar. No, it was Ben. <laughs> Yeah, that was like an infamous runway moment, it right? Was one of those moments where it's like, we feel like your personality isn't coming through. Wait, we haven't met the cat. This is Wayne. Oh, hey, Wayne. He doesn't like to look at the camera either. Oh, well, he's beautiful. Wayne and Reggie are both beautiful. Who did Michelle tell that she needed her to be more of a church lady? Oh, that was Sugar. It was. She was playing sort of an evangelical character, right? Yeah. 
can you imagine Michelle telling anyone to be more of a church lady? Know, right? And then the last one is, who did Michelle say, I feel like it's more of a PSA for plastic surgery to? Was that for Ben? It was indeed. Was it the challenge, the All Stars challenge? With no, it was on her original season with Darian Lake, and it was promoting the RuPaul Glamazon line. Oh. And they were making all of those funny hazes, <laughs> like they were like uh, had had too much work done. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys both again for joining me today. Please go follow these guys and continue to support all of your favorite drag performers and their husbands. We hope you've enjoyed us today on All the Queen's Men. See you next time. Bye.